Hey guys, this is Ashby with Ashby Farms and I'm still fighting my head cold, so sorry how this comes across, but today's video is going to be about uh, making your own beekeeping equipment. It's going to be a three-part series, and of course my goal is always just to help you guys uh, get started with beekeeping. So whether you're just building one box or like me, I'm building 600 right now, um, it's pretty much the same steps. So I'm going to be giving you explanations of my dimensions why they're different than what you might get at a bee supply store and uh, just explain kind of the, the whys behind why I do what I do. So uh, like I said in today's video we're going to be discussing building a Langstroth 10 frame deep hive body or super, like I run all deep supers, your super is what you put honey in. So you got three sizes, a uh, shallow, a medium, or a deep. I run deeps, the negative of a deep is uh, the weight a full box will weigh 80 pounds, um, so that's kind of hard. Oftentimes, Corey and I will team lift these. Uh, the positive is all my equipment is standardized to a deep frame. So this is our standard 10 frame deep boxes. I'll discuss dimensions here in just one second. Um, this is one of my first generation boxes, and the negative about the first generation is I built the total length from here to here at 20 inches and 3 eighths, so 20 and 3 eighths inches long. And what it created, the problem is too much space right in here. And sometimes then we have to be careful, the frames will fall down in there, so we have to be real gentle and make sure that the, it's called the ears, and the ears are resting where they need to be. You still end up with some B space on either side, but it's actually not required. So, Right now I'm cutting, this would be the side piece. Of course I pre-drill, uh, pre countersink my holes. And our total dimensions from here to here on our newest round of boxes is 20 and 1 8 inches. Again, that's 20 and 1 8. And then our total height from here to here is 9 and 3 quarters inches. And the reason I give it that extra eighth of an inch both on height and on width is oftentimes we see some shrinkage even at even though this wood's been sitting outside for like six months once we cut the pieces oftentimes we'll see shrinkage afterwards um to give you an idea these are some lids we built last year and we ended up with 100 lids that have a quarter inch crack in them and some people would worry about that and freak out about that um i don't i've got 200 hives currently overwintering like this. It gives extra airflow. I'm sure there is some robbing problems uh, in the fall for, you know, but I, I just don't worry about it. Uh, so this would be, this piece right here in front of us is gonna be our side. Again, it's 20 and an eighth from here to here. And it's nine and three quarters from here to here. Now, I'm dealing with true one inch thick boards. The stuff you get at Lowe's will either be three quarters or seven eighths, and that needs to be taken into account for the total length from here to here. If you just blindly follow my measurements and you don't have a one inch thick board, you're gonna end up with this exact same problem where your frames fall down into the box, they wedge themselves, the bees propolize them. It makes for a real pain in the butt. Um, so trust me, make sure your total dimensions on it are from this end to this in 20 and 1 eighth. Now, um, our inside dimension length would be from here to here, or I'm sorry, here to here, and I run 15 and an eighth of an inch. Uh, that's 15 and 1 eighth. And that piece, this is this piece here, that represents this. So again, 15 and an eighth. The reason that it's a little bit longer, if we look at this 10 frame box, and remember you should always center your frames before you leave it. We have a half an inch and a half an inch, or maybe it's like a half an inch and five eighths of an inch over here. Sometimes the bees will slide in a little bit of burr comb in the edge, but what that allows is an extra bit of area for the bees to police the small hive beetles. Instead of you know, oftentimes a lot of, of beekeeping equipment has the frame jammed up right next to the wall. It's a great place that the bees can get, can't get into and for the small hive beetles to just run rampant in your hive. So I like and build that extra 
you know, half an inch over other commercial equipment. Now that means that my uh, queen excluders, when I put them on top, do not come all the way edge to edge. I have to go about halfway. So maybe my, my queen excluder come halfway up this board and then again, halfway back this way. Standard queen excluders do still fit. Um, however, uh, like I said, it's just, it's just not the total length. Uh, one other thing to talk about is your depth. This is a Gen 1 box, like I said. And as you can see, the frames don't sit deep enough. The bees can't get up and over when you put a flat lid on here. So Gen 2 boxes right here. This is three quarters of an inch by three quarters of an inch. Remember, B space is three eighths of an inch. Grab a frame here. So when we put, see the bees can now crawl up over top between a, my lids sit flat, they sit flush with this. So if we've got, let's see, if I, there we go, there we go. So if I've got a flat lid on here, the bees can now crawl here. And since we reduced that total length to 20 and an eighth, the frames now sit just a hair off, just like that. Um, so anyways, total height, again, nine and three quarters. And so same here, this is your Gen 1 box, Gen 2 pieces, boxes we're building now. Um, total height, nine and three quarters here to here. It's a three quarter by three quarter cutout on a table saw. And then uh, last thing is our handles. It's two inches from here to here. We run a four data blade set, which creates a half an inch gap. If you're going to paint your boxes, this design right here is a terrible idea. Um, reason being, get that set up. When it rains, water will sit right here. And anywhere that you have exposed end grain, you can call it, that water gets into, that's where your rot would occur. So of course, uh, we wax dip all of our equipment so I can make my handles like this and water will just sit there and pool all day and will never cause rot on that. That's why a lot of your, your B handles kind of have that, that hollowed out, sloped out, they cut it at like a 15 degree angle so that water doesn't pool up. Um, one last thing to talk about, a lot of people ask, do you glue your boxes? No, we don't. Um, overkill is already happening in this situation, so there's no need to kill it further. Um, I run three screws, one, two, and three. See on this piece here, we countersink them first with a countersink bit. So, <clears throat> so pre-drilling is an extra step. But this is what they call a, a butt joint, where this board butts right up against this board. Oftentimes, these boards are warped. As you can see, this piece here is trying to cup this way. So we've got about a maybe a 32nd of an inch here. It's flush here, and it's flush here. So I don't worry about this crack. The bees will either propolize it, or they will use it as part of their airflow. And um, this box here is now two years old. And I just brought it in from outside because it's really windy and cold out there today. But uh, as you can see, we've got no rot occurring here. As you can see, we've got no rot occurring here. And the reason being is when you wax dip wood, if you'll watch my other wax dipping videos, you can see that the moisture in the wood bubbles out of the end grain in the form of steam. And once we remove this box from the wax vat, all the wax sucks right into the wood because with the evacuation of that steam, it leaves a negative pressure inside the wood. When you pull it out, it soaks the wax inward. And now this is weatherproof for 20 years. Um, a lot of your 10 frame boxes have a finger joint and they say finger joints are stronger because of course you have nails going this way and nails going this way. But just over time, the expansion and contraction of the wood in the sunlight, uh, plus the heat of winter, summer, winter, summer, those nails work their way out and the equipment tends to fall apart. And also in painting, uh, when you paint your equipment, you have to put like an extra coat on any end grain. So that would be anywhere you're cutting here, uh, here or here, 
in painting. Um, when you wax dip it like we do, then you don't have to worry about, of course, that wax or the box completely submerges in the wax and uh, it permeates the entire uh, block of wood. So if we were to come in and do a cutaway on this box, you can see that the wax is soaked all the way through. I've done that in the past. Um, and talking about these joints and not coming apart, we use a 10 by two and a half or 10 by three. Sometimes the 10 by threes go on sale over at Lowe's. So I'll get those um, occasionally. For the most part, a 10 by two and a half. So th almost all the thread is in this board here. And these things are not gonna come apart. Um, we can stand this box up on its corner, like on, on its corner, like this, and I can drop it and it won't break. The shear, the shear off strength, which imagine what it takes to shear a nail or a screw in half. The shear off strength of screws is always significantly less than that of nails. But I can stand my 200 pound self on this corner and it will not break this box. Uh, that's one of those just trust me's. But I've done it to see how strong they are because we've got 12 screws in this box. One other thing to mention is the cost of wood. So I go through a local sawmill company. Um, they're about 45 minutes away from me. I found them on Facebook Marketplace. Cody and I are good friends now and I get wood at a fraction of the cost of what you would buy it for at Lowe's. However, for those of you maybe just putting together five, six, 10 boxes, it's cheaper to go through a B supply store. They're already cut to the right dimensions. It's kiln dried wood, it's easy to paint. It's been planed, it's very friendly. I'm doing things as bare minimum and rough cut lumber as we can get, but the bees don't care. Like the, the bees don't care if you have a fancy hive, a flow hive, it's like 800 bucks or your bare minimum hives. Um, there's a lot of things that, to take into consideration that can kill your bees above what kind of box they're in. Um, small hive beetles, diseases, uh, deformed wing virus, varroa, varroa mite viruses that varroa mites carry. Um, I could go on and on and on. As far as dimensions go, the bees don't care. So guys, again, Ashby with Ashby Farms. If you found this video helpful, uh, please subscribe to the channel. Please comment. I'll comment back when you talk if you got questions. Uh, when you comment and you subscribe, it helps me get found on YouTube. So I would personally appreciate it if you guys could follow along with us. Stay tuned for more videos coming. Uh, part two will be about the lids. Part three will be about our palettes. Thank you very much.